Welcome back to another Cloud Compare tutorial. So today we're going to do a quick uh, tutorial on how to do some uh, error statistics uh, from a point cloud data set. So this is useful if you want to kind of do some uh, validation statistics and kind of error checking on your elevation values specifically. Um, so in this uh, data set that I've got up is a structure for motion data set of a river in the UK uh, that I've used in previous research. And uh, in order to validate this uh, small section of a larger data set, I've got a, uh, another set of points loaded into Cloud Compare. Um, these are just XYZ points from a total station survey of the site. Uh, at the same time, uh, the imagery for the photogrammetry was flown. So if I turn off my uh, structure for motion point cloud, you'll see that I've got a series of points here and I can up the uh, point size here just so you can see those a little bit more clearly. So this is just, a, again, a small section of the uh, validation data, but it's a little over 800 individual points. And if I turn on the point cloud, uh, you can see that a majority of those points are in the channel but there's a fair number of points that are up on the banks and the floodplains as well. So it's be a good kind of well-distributed uh, validation data set, maybe a little overkill in some in, for some people, but uh, in our case, we were looking at the bathymetry of this channel, so we really needed a lot of in-channel points. So with those two data sets, um, we can actually use a tool in Cloud Compare called the Interpolate from Another Entity. Uh, tool. And so what this allows you to do is take uh, kind of scalar field or attribute values from one point cloud or a mesh and kind of transfer them and interpolate them onto a, another uh, point cloud entity. So in this case, what we're going to end up doing is actually interpolating the structure for motion Z values onto the validation points. And then we can do uh, some basic kind of uh, error subtraction math uh, to get the difference in elevations between uh, those two uh, different point clouds. So the first thing that we're going to have to do on this is uh, extract our Z values onto our structure for motion point cloud. So in this case, we're going to uh, export coordinates to scalar field. So tools, projection, export coordinates to scalar field, the Z values onto our structure for motion point cloud. So the thing that we're going to do so that we can avoid confusion here is actually rename uh, this scalar field. So by default, it just comes in as chord Z, so the Z coordinate. But if we go up to edit, scalar fields, and rename, we can actually rename this active scalar field. And so in this case, I'm actually going to call this SFMZ for structure for motion Z. So that's the Z values from our structure for motion data set. And then I'm going to do the same on our validation data set. So I'm going to select my validation data, say projection, export coordinates to scalar fields, Z values, and then I'm going to rename that scalar field to uh, validation Z or, or val Z just for short. Okay. So I have validation Z on my validation data and the structure for motion Z on my structure for motion data. So now what I want to do is, is select the structure for motion data, hold down control, and then select the validation data as well. And then up in tools, or in edit, excuse me, uh, we're going to go to scalar fields and then interpolate from another entity. And so in this pop-up, you want to make sure that you have these, uh, your two data sets the right way around. And so the source is what we're interpolating from, and the destination is where we're going to put that interpolated data. So in this case, our source is going to be our structure for motion data, and our destination is going to be onto our validation data. So we'll say OK. And then we want to select the scalar field that we want to interpolate uh, to the validation points. And if you were doing something different, a different operation with this, you could select a, another scalar field. But in this case, we're just going to select Structure for Motion Z here and say OK. Now, in the interpolation kind of or, uh, algorithm here, we can 
choose a number of different options. So we have the uh, absolute nearest neighbor. So the, the, the single closest nearest neighbor point is where we're gonna pull our values from. We could use a number of nearest neighbors. And so this is helpful if you have kind of a lower density uh, point cloud that you wanna kind of pull and average a little bit over a, a larger space. And then if you have a truly three-dimensional data set, you can actually use kind of a spherical uh, neighbor extraction. Um, but in our case, for most geospatial data, nearest neighbors for lower density point clouds, and then the single nearest neighbor if you have a higher density or higher resolution point cloud. So in our case, since our structure for motion data here is, is gridded at about five centimeters, um, we're actually just gonna use the single nearest neighbor here in order to calculate uh, the error. Um, if you do do one of these other options, there is uh, an option to choose whether you want the average value, the median value, or a kind of weighted distribution of uh, the values. Um, but for our case, we're just gonna go with that single nearest neighbor. So we're gonna say, okay. This will interpolate those values. And then uh, what comes out of this is basically a scalar field that matches the scalar field that we extracted on our validation data. So if we select our validation data, come down to our scalar fields, now you can see we have the validation Z that we exported originally, and now we have that new structure for motion Z. So now what we can do is we can actually turn off our point cloud. And so we just have our validation data. Now, in order to actually calculate the difference here, we could export this out as a CSV and, and do it in Excel or Python but Cloud Compare actually has a built-in uh, calculator function up on the top here. So it's a little calculator icon. So if we click that, that'll bring up the scalar field arithmetic uh, pop-up. And so the real trick here is that we want to make sure that we have our scalar fields the right way around for our arithmetic op operation. So we're gonna have scalar field one and then whatever math operator we want and then scalar field two. So in, for most error statistics, we want the measured value, in which in our case is the structure for motion Z, minus the actual or truth value, which is our validation Z. So structure for motion Z minus validation Z. So we'll say okay on that, and that'll give us the difference between those two values. So you can see that that renames a or c creates a new uh, scalar field that just calls itself structure for motion Z minus validation Z. And if you wanted to rename that, you could, uh, but for now we'll just leave it. So in terms of the uh, color ramp here, I'm actually gonna choose a divergent color ramp. So one that has, uh, this is, just goes from red for negative values up to blue for positive values with white in the middle. But what you'll notice is that Cloud Compare doesn't actually uh, like to center on the zero value, which would be the, the white and, and lighter shades uh, in this color ramp. So the trick to get that is to go onto the parameters tab here and click on uh, symmetrical color scale. And so what that does is actually forces uh, the color ramp to be kind of centered at zero and uh, goes positive and negative uh, into the color ramp uh, that way. So now you can see in our color ramp, we've got a little bit di a different view. Uh, and if we actually turn on our uh, color ramp or color bar over here on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that our white values here are centered at zero and we have red for negative values and then blues for positive values. Now, um, so what we can see is in our data set here is that we've got mostly kind of lighter colored values, which means that our data set's pretty decent. Um, and if you look at the histogram over here on the left-hand side in our property, properties window, you can see that we actually have a nice peak of values right at or near zero, which is what we'd like to see in most geospatial data sets. Um, and then that data set is, or that error is pretty normally distributed on either side. So just by visualizing this, okay, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that there are a couple of spots. So kind of one right here on the left-hand side of the point cloud, 
um, some darker blue positive values up here in the, uh, this is actually up on the floodplain. Um, and then some differences kind of right along this cut bank right here. So if I turn on my point cloud and I switch it back to its uh, RGB colors, this will give us some kind of context for some of the different error we're seeing. So if we kind of, we can flash this kind of back and forward. And so there's some areas that are definitely have higher error. So right here, right in the middle of this point cloud, there's uh, some low errors and some higher errors that are probably associated with this tree kind of overhanging uh, the river right here. So our, our photogrammetry data didn't do so well uh, there. And then also right along the edge here of this cut bank, um, you can see that we've got some a little bit higher error there and that's just probably just because that is a pretty steep surface right there. And so we're not getting uh, quite as good a definition as we would like there. So this would be our kind of a map of error um, if you wanted to think about it like that. So spatially distributed error across our data set. Um, if we wanted to actually look at the histogram properly, okay, we can actually go up on the top here and look at either the histogram tool on its own or the, uh, the statistics uh, histogram. And so we're actually going to go with the statistics histogram uh, for most of these error analyses just because we can actually get the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of this error uh, just in one kind of fail swoop. So in this case, we're going to choose a Gaussian distribution since we know that our data are pretty well just dis normally distributed. So we can say OK. And so in this case, um, actually, we wanted to do that on our validation data, <laughs> not on our point cloud. Okay, so, um, so in this case, you can see that we have a the color bar here doesn't quite work so well, uh, but you can see here that the the mean uh, of this distribution is uh, 0.01 in our case meters, so one centimeter is our mean error. And then we have a standard deviation of uh, 0.6 meters or 6.1 meters, so 6.1 centimeters. So that's actually pretty good. You could write those down and, and include those as your error statistics. Um, if you wanted to actually go a little bit further, I would probably export these out as a CSV file. Um, the point, the raw point cloud out as a CSV file, and do some extra statistics um, in uh, either Excel or in Python. Um, just so that you have a, a little bit more fidelity on those statistics. But this just gives you kind of that ballpark of, you know, are we really in a, in a, in a close, um, are we close or are we pretty far away in terms of our error on this data set? And so in this case, with one centimeter of mean error and a standard deviation of six centimeters, I think this is actually a very, very good data set. Um, and the cool thing is that we can actually look at this again spatially and see that yeah, there's a few hot spots here and there, but generally our error is, is kind of pretty well distributed across the data set. There's not, you know, it's not leaning to one side or kind of totally up or totally down. Um, so we're, we've got a lot of kind of near zero values and the, the small errors that we're seeing are kind of randomly uh, distributed throughout our data set. So that's pretty good. So that's a basic way to do um, some basic validation statistics or validation uh, checking. If you have an independent kind of independently surveyed point cloud um, in conjunction with your uh, photogrammetric or LIDAR point cloud.